Hey everyone, it's me Holly, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be taking a dive into the topics of self-esteem and why it's so normalized in today's society to have a low self-esteem. Self-esteem is confidence in one's own worth and abilities. Self-image is the idea one has on own abilities, appearance and personality. So it is how we perceive ourselves. And you know, a lot of people, um, do see themselves a lot differently to how others see them. You know, we live our daily lives as ourselves. You know, we wake up in the morning, we look in the mirror and it's us. You know, we see ourselves. We get to know ourselves. I mean, throughout our lives, we're always learning things about ourselves, which I find in some ways quite beautiful because we never truly know everything about ourselves. There's always something to learn, um, whether that's, you know, maybe in the past you've had a really cringy era at the time you thought that was normal you thought that was yourself but when you kind of look back on that time you're like I was cringy and you learn from from things that you've done but also in a way you know in a way that's not so great is that um a lot of the time people don't perceive perceive themselves correctly you know this is how a lot of um, mental health issues like body dysmorphia occur is when people don't see themselves you know, they are constantly fixated on flaws and they their image of themselves is completely different, completely different to what other people see that, of them. A lot of us do tend to kind of make ideas of what others, what you think others think of you. You know, you're never gonna truly know what other people are thinking of you. Like you can't get into someone's head that much to be able to know every single thought they've ever had of you. You won't ever know. We can only assume and create these ideas of what we believe they are feeling about us. And really, this is just a deep rooted feeling of judgment for ourselves. You know, if you leave the house and you have thought to yourself, I don't really like my hair today. Every single person that maybe even looks your way, you're going to think, oh my God, they're looking at my hair. You know, the other day I... Don't, I don't tend to do much with my hair, but I decided to put it up into like, I think two little bits like, hold on, I don't want to mess up my hair. Like that, I think I had it like that, and I had two either side. But everywhere I was going, I was like, I wanted to be confident, but I was just thinking like, are people looking at me weird because I have my hair up? To be fair, it didn't affect my daily life. If they did, I wouldn't know. And I didn't really need to fixate it on that much because technically it was just myself you know, trying to judge myself, thinking, well, if I saw per someone looking like that, would I, would I make a comment? Probably not. But the huge question for today's video, which makes me sound like a teacher for today's video is, you know, why are we so fixated on our flaws and how has society been molded to create this desire to be attractive? I have four chapters of this video. So the four chapters of this video are, Number one is normalization of low self-esteem. Number two is the desire to be attractive. Number three is the effects of lack of love. And number four is journey to self-acceptance. Chapter one, normalization of low self-esteem. So in this chapter, I'm going to be taking a dive into different ways in which we have been kind of conditioned to feel like it's normal to have a low self-esteem. Now you watching this may feel like you don't have a low self-esteem and that's perfectly normal like our our view of ourselves and how we feel about ourselves will fluctuate throughout our lives we will go from feeling absolutely confident to maybe times where we feel not so confident and this can really depend on different factors like you know things that are happening in our lives if you've just gone for a breakup you may not be feeling as confident or, for example, if you've gone through a really tough time, um, you know, maybe you're stressed with exams, you may not feel confident because you've constantly got these other thoughts and feelings in your brain and you're just not feeling great. If we were to ask the average teenager how they felt about themselves or just anyone in general, like to how they felt about themselves, a lot of people would say something negative. This is just because we don't want to be seen as confident or arrogant if that's just not how we want to be perceived by other people. You know, if someone said, oh, how do you feel about yourself? And you're like, oh, I love everything about myself. I love my hair. I love... And you take that approach, which is completely fine to do. Someone may perceive that as you 
you know, showing off, trying to look cool and, you know, have this personality which you might not be want, like, you might not want to be associated with. However, really, shouldn't we be answering honestly and saying the things that we feel about ourselves and not trying to override this feeling of, you know, contentment with ourselves with something negative just because we don't want to be perceived that way. Personally, if someone was to ask me how I feel about myself, I'll probably just say, oh, I'm okay. <laughs> like, you know, like, I don't have strong feelings, like, about that, <laughs> if you get what I mean. I know there are different extremes where some people will be completely confident and just go for it and just name everything they love about themselves which is perfectly fine and then to another extreme where people just cannot think of something that they like about themselves and they just go heavily on negatives and stuff like that because you also feel like your flaws which you can see and you're very fixated on you feel like other people are definitely knowledge like knowledgeable on them and they can see them too so you kind of just want to let them know that you know that they're there so to be like maybe if you go up to your friend because you're meeting up and you know your hair's not doing great or you're having a bad headache and you want them to know that you know you go straight in with oh my hair's not doing well today I feel like that's just because we don't want to feel like you're out of the loop you want to make sure people know that you know this is so confusing okay so there's a study that I looked at. So in the study, um, it's about the rise of body dysmorphia, which is a mental health condition where a person spends a lot of time worrying about flaws in their appearance. And these flaws aren't even noticeable to other people. They always, whenever they see themselves, they see a changed version because that's what they feel they look like. So the study was based on adolescence and it found that the mean age for feeling you know, dissat dissatisfaction, I cannot see that word, the mean age for feeling dissatisfied, there we go, with our bodies is around 16, um, and mainly in females, but, you know, both sexes have different areas in which they are more um, insecure about. For women, there was more discontentment with body fat, which is their, the main thing, because there are some graphs I'll put on the screen. Um, so the main one was body fat, then it was facial hair, height and complexion. And then for men, they mainly have issues with muscular body and then other things like acne, height, weight and hair thinning, which I saw this and I kind of, it kind of really spoke to me and kind of made a lot of sense to me, right? Because um, as you can see with like the results, so for women, it's body fat the main one, I'm going to fixate on the main one, so for women it's body fat and then for men it's the muscular body that they're insecure about, like if they don't have a muscular body, if you get what I mean. Um, and this clearly shows that there are beauty standards with within each sex, um, you know, for women the beauty standard is to be thin, um, you know, obviously now there's been quite a push for change which I think is very important to try and get rid of these beauty sta beauty standards which I will come on to a bit later on but you know beauty standards have always been around and affecting people's lives because there's always something that people want to be like you know even if you're completely content with yourself you may see someone else and be like oh I wish I had their eyes for example you know and it doesn't have to be unhealthy the way that you look at other people it can just be a pure admiration for them but then a lot of the time with the body standards a lot of people will go to lengths like you know having plastic surgery and stuff like that because they feel dissatisfied with themselves because they want to be like fit this category so mainly the beauty standard for men is to be muscular and physically fit this is trying to like fit into these different aesthetics we shouldn't really be wanting to fit into categories when we're all different for for a reason like you know you wouldn't want to look identical to someone else really would you i mean some people would but our own features and characteristics is what makes us unique um so that's why i feel there's been a massive push to just you know embrace yourself and embrace what you look like embrace your characteristics your personality because i know i know i'm talking about self-esteem and like body image and stuff like that but another thing that people do struggle with is their personality and feeling like they have a really awkward personality or annoying personality even if their friends don't even think that you know 
moving on to how social media really influences this kind of beauty standard. See, beauty standards have always been a thing, like however far back you want to go. I'm going to add a clip here a little bit more about that. Beauty standards over time have changed drastically. I'm going to give you a few examples from different time periods so that you can see the difference between now and then. So in the 1800s, clear faces, bright eyes and tinted lips were desirable, but everything had to look natural. It was believed that cheeks painted with blush had to look flushed and lips had to look bitten rather than painted. In the 1920s, women wore bras that flattened their chests and wore clothing that gave them a curveless look. Women even shortened their hair, leaving behind the long-held belief that long hair signified beauty and desirability. Whereas now, I feel like there isn't clear standards because obviously we do try to be accepting of everything but I do still feel like there are certain things that you know influences do kind of push for so in today's standard for women are small waist long hair and flawless skin girls are required to be this perfect image when nobody's perfect I feel like there's a lot of conflicting standards now and I feel like each to be honest like the standards change so quickly nowadays from you know the use of social media you know one minute people want a really curvy look and then the next minute people want everyone to be skinny and you can just never really understand what people want now you know there is always something different always a new influencer a new person that people are going to look to and try to be like them but really everything's always changing so fast if you were to change how you looked you'd probably not fit in the standard in a few months to come. Over years, it's gonna change drastically, but there's always going to be something people want to be. There's always gonna be different trends and stuff like that, whether or not it's being promoted in the same way that it is now, because now we've got TikTok and Instagram and other things that really boost up these ideas. And that's why there's been such an influx of people wanting to change things about themselves and stuff like that. Um, and also, you know, the technology to be able to do that as well. But, you know, compared to like years ago when social media wasn't a thing, there's a lot more people feeling the need to change because they kind of just want to look better on social media. So there is a link which I'll link all, all these articles in the description. So there's a study into predicting the use of visually orientated social media on the role of psychological well-being. So a quote from the um, article was, appearance consciousness and self-esteem indirectly predicted the selection of visual orientated social media platforms via self-validation. Now I've put this quote in because I wanted to kind of just take a little deep dive into it and kind of break up what I was thinking about. From experience with secondary school, um, which is my main example, which you can relate to a lot of different things. So if you may not have gone to secondary school, you may not have been in, I feel like a lot of people have been in a school environment, but if you can't relate to that, or maybe your experience at school was completely perfectly fine, maybe think of just an example where you have to be around a lot of people a lot of the time. So I found myself becoming quite conscious of how I was looking. now. I've never been someone who's hated the way I look like I've always been content in that way but I became more conscious of it is what I'm trying to say. I do feel like when you're in a public place and there's loads of people around you you do start to be a bit more conscious of things that you're doing. Example me sitting in this right imagine I'm at school and I'm sitting in my desk in this chair right now and I'm in class and I cannot see myself in no way like there's nothing for me to see myself all I have is this visual idea in my head of what I looked like the last time I looked in a mirror or how I'm feeling. So for example, maybe if I feel like there's like something on my face, I'm going to keep trying to like remove something that may not even be there just because I feel like it's there. At school where you're like, you don't want to look bad, basically. You don't want to look bad at school, which there's nothing really like telling you what is bad and what isn't. But like in your head, you've made this idea and this kind of um what's the word like a scale of when you do look really good and when you don't and you kind of made this idea and you're like you want to be up here but you know most of the time you are in the middle however when you go to school you feel like you're like drifting all the way down here just because you don't have any concept of what you look like um if you're 
got no mirror on you, what you think you look like will be completely different to what other people are actually seeing of you. You know, when you look in a mirror, for, for example, for me, like I've got, obviously they're noticeable spots on my face. When I look in a mirror, I'm like, damn, I need to like sort that out. Um, I've not been covering them up because I need them to just go away. Like if I put something on it, it would ruin it. I've just been embracing it because I don't really care that bad. But when I do look in the mirror, I'm like, damn, like I need to sort that out. <laughs> Skincare time. Um, for other people, when they look at you, I've, if I'm using my own personal experience, when I'm looking at someone else in my class, I'm not there studying their face like this. I'm not like, you know, I'm not like, whenever I talk to them, I'm not going to turn around and be like, you know what I mean? I'm just going to look at them and then move on. So why is that? Why do I feel like it's going to be different when other people look at me? Why do I feel like when other people look at me, they're going to start like pointing out everything on my face? Like they won't because that's just not what we do. With social media, pro predominantly TikTok now, because that's what is creating all these trends and aesthetics, um, you know, falling under a certain aesthetic and looking visually appealing created like jealousy in a way. Like I know when I see like really cute videos, I'm just like, I wish I could make videos like that. Relaxing videos on TikTok that are like 15 seconds long, nice, easy to watch. And I'm just like, wow, your life is perfect. Their life isn't perfect. No one's life is perfect, if you, if you think about it. But I'm seeing a lovely little 15 seconds of the most aesthetically pleasing bed sheets, nice walk with the sun shining and the cute dog and their clothes, their outfits are amazing. Like everything about it is just aesthetic you know what I mean and watch it like seeing all these different aesthetics makes you feel like oh I want to do that because that's what looks good to me and there's nothing wrong with like seeing a certain like style or aesthetic and being like oh I want to get involved and live my life around that because it's just really what we find to be appealing for ourselves so that's why we kind of want to fit into that kind of category because we kind of like the look of that and then a lot of people will want to make videos similar for example if i went on to make an, a 15 second video you know trying to get all cute parts of my day in even though my day is probably not that cute that's just because i want to watch it back myself and feel like i'm living the dream i this looks perfect to me even if i know that day that i've fallen in front of 20 people cried my eyes out but seeing this 15 second clip or something beautiful that I did that day, that makes me feel good. So I'm just gonna continue posting like that, maybe posting photos of myself so that I could get self-validation and stuff like that because that is what, you know, we find visually pleasing. Welcome to location number two. I'm on a spinny chair in my conservatory. Chapter two, desire to be attractive. Now in this section of the video, I'm just gonna be talking about why we feel the need to kind of fit into certain categories and certain beauty standards, whether we do it consciously or not. Because, you know, even if some people might be really aware of the fact that they're trying to change themselves, you know, always seeing something online and, you know, maybe if you get an advert for something that you think will look really nice and it kind of fits the trends now, you might buy it instantly, or you watch an influencer on TikTok and change your whole personality to match them you know, you see them in a way that you want, like you kind of, you associate yourself with them, you identify with them in a certain way. For example, if you're watching a female influencer and you're female, you may feel, you may feel like, oh, I want to kind of change myself to be like them. And you might imitate things that they do and copy them, just to put it straight. <laughs> or it may be that you just want validation from yourself, you know? you want to be able to, you know, look in the mirror and think, wow, you look absolutely fabulous today. <laughs> and you just kind of want that validation from yourself. You don't really care what other people think of you. You just want it from yourself and want to feel confident in yourself. And in today's society, I mean, a lot of people are, you know, trying to boost others' confidence. And it's a very positive, a body positive society. And I feel like this change is really important. And there's still a long way to go, to be honest. But you know, I do feel like over time, people feel less inclined to follow them. If, well, I mean, on my TikTok anyway, there are people that are like feeling, trying to 
what's it, de-influence, I think that's the word, they're trying to like, tell you that the trends that were popular aren't really that great and really just cause you to have a random lot of stuff. I know there was this one girl on TikTok, but she bought loads of, when cow print was really popular, she bought loads of cow print stuff, hats, tops and everything like that. And she now has all this stuff that she doesn't even like just because it was a trend. Obviously, like with beauty standards and trends, this kind of falls into the social conformity type stuff that I do in psychology. Now, I'm not completely knowledgeable on this stuff, so don't like take me as an expert just because I study A-level psychology. <laughs> but what I do know and how I, how I can apply this to the social conformity is that a lot of us will go along with what other people do or say because we either want to fit in or because we feel like the other person is correct and right and we want to we want to feel like we're as knowledgeable with you know beauty standards and like trends and stuff like that a lot of people will go along with what other people say and do because they want to be associated with them and they identify with them in some certain characteristics for example if you were to be a female and you were watching loads of female influences I feel like I've already said this but you associate with them so you want to kind of go along with what they're doing because you feel like that's going to help you fit in or at your school if there was a whole group of popular girls you may go along with everything they're saying even if it's absolutely crazy just because you want to still be friends with them if you were to be around people that were very fixated on their looks and they're the type of people who may be completely like I don't know beauty focused they love to have perfect hair perfect makeup I guess or perfect outfit and you start to change your behavior and change how you feel about yourself because of them you know maybe if they talk down upon themselves or down upon others you may start to feel a little bit more insecure in yourself because of what they are saying this kind of creates this desire to be a certain type of attractiveness which is just a concept which just never needs to be a thing like it doesn't need to be a thing like attractiveness isn't really a scale that is fixed because you know to other people like people have different types this is a weird thing to say but like people have different types and you know one person may look at someone and think oh my god they are not for me <laughs> but then someone else may look at them and think they are absolutely the most perfect person to exist you're not going to be everyone's like favorite person you're not like not everyone's gonna have the same view on you no matter if that's appearance or personality or anything like that but someone will like and if you're friends with someone they're gonna see you in a really positive way because you, you've created this bond with them and you if you've got a positive friendship group then you shouldn't really feel like you're competing or anything like that for this desire to be attractive because really it's not it's not something to compete over if you get what I mean like everyone is unique in their own way and there are ways you can enhance your looks for example makeup and stuff like that I never actually finished filming this clip but so I'm just going to do it quickly with the voiceover but now we've kind of got this whole concept of rating people on a scale of one to ten like I've seen so many people on TikTok, um, like people going up to people in the street and saying, what do you rate this person on a scale of one to 10? And you're watching it and thinking, you've completely misjudged them or you, you've got the like complete wrong idea, but that's because personally to you, you have a completely different idea how attractive you find them. So really it's, an, it's quite a, um, what's the word, subjective? I was correct. Subjective is like your own personal opinions. I mean, everyone's gonna have their own opinion. Um, but also I feel like the overuse of social media has really like changed how people feel about themselves because on social media you're posting your best stuff like this is your best angles your best looks and like if I'm being honest I'm not going to post a photo where I feel like I don't look my best who knows really what my best is personally I have this idea of what I would prefer to be out there and what I prefer not to be and we've all kind of got this uh, concept in our head of when we do look good and when we don't even though that shouldn't really be controlling what we put out, you know, onto social media. But it's just a personal thing, really. And I do feel like, but yeah, I also do feel like another point here I have made is um, 
in society it seems focused on how people look rather than what they actually do. This kind of comes into the concept of pretty privilege. Now, pretty privilege is the association of beauty with talent, intelligence and social success and health. There's a lot of situations where this can be applicable. For example, um, maybe someone in the music in industry, like someone could be really talented, but they're not deemed as fitting the beauty standards or what a label sees as, you know, what they want to promote. So they end up just having so much talent to not really get as far. Chapter three, effects of lack of love. In this chapter, I'm going to be just discussing basically how love can impact how you feel about yourself. So obviously love is a universally appreciated emotion. I was gonna say loved emotion, but that's literally like using the same word. Um, it's a universally appreciated emotion. Like it's something that we all seek for and we all want because it just makes it's one emotion that is so strong it can just change everything not even in the way like you know you can love a partner but then you can love your family your friends animals the world doing things you can love you know for me i love going to see musicals it literally fills a hole in my heart going to see musicals i don't know why but i just love them so much not having that love from a certain person or you know can impact how you feel about yourself quite greatly in psychology there's a topic on attachment i'm not going to go into too much detail about that i think it was bowlby he talked about maternal deprivation which is basically being deprived of your mother's love and care he like did a i'm not going to go into too much detail because you know but basically he found out that he basically said there's a quote he said and it's something like um a mother's love is more important than vitamins or something. I'll put it on the screen. And it, basically, not having love from a mother. Sorry, that sounded like a lyric of a song. I don't know what song that is. Not having love from your mother is very detrimental to your health and well-being in the future. And it just shows that like people who have been deprived of love from their mother um, go on to have mental health issues and stuff like that. It's also the same thing with like an internal working model when we see our pet like our parents kind of create this foundation of what we blueprint that's the word blueprint of how we perceive future relationships so if your parents have a really loving relationship and you're always around them and you're feeling that love and appreciation um you'll go on to you'll retain that information into your head and you'll go on to have loving relationships in the future which is going to be really good on your self-esteem there's been a really toxic environment between parents and stuff like that that can create you to feel a bit more like you can have a lot more mental health issues and stuff like that because of you know your internal work and model not being ideal yeah what i mean by ideal is just kind of an internal work and model that will allow you to be successful in the future with like relationships and stuff like that do a, get a bit personal get a bit personal up in here um I don't really actually I always talk about myself on YouTube anyway so now I'm going to be talking about like romantic relationships and stuff like that because personally for me I've never had a relationship now I'm 16 I'm going to be 17 in like a month wait it's April today that means I do have a month till my birthday a little bit over that um anyway I'm 16 and I've never had a relationship which it's never something I've kind of really wanted to the point like I feel like people I can't, like, I don't know if anyone else can relate to this. I cannot see myself in a relationship at all. Like, it's, this is probably not good for my self-esteem. This is what I'm talking about. It. Like, personally, I don't feel unlovable, but I know some people on TikTok have said they've never been in a relationship, so they feel unlovable. You know, because obviously not having a relationship and not having people kind of love you in that way, because obviously you've got love from your family and stuff like that, but it's kind of just a different sort of, love in a relationship is kind of you've got the physical attraction and you know the emotional connection and stuff like that and then in your family it's just kind of love and appreciation for you and you know enjoying your company and stuff like that it's very completely different even if you have this love from your family not having the other type of connection may make you feel a little bit unlovable not from my mouth from tiktok <laughs> for me personally it just it's just kind of 
I mean, I've I've said to myself, I'm going to focus on school, um, and I've not really. I don't know. I think I just get the ick real easy. Like I actually do get the ick really easy. You've not really had that kind of, like someone to be like, oh, you look gorgeous or anything like that. Like obviously you've got your friends telling you, oh, you look amazing, which very much boosts self-esteem. But I think it's kind of different when it's someone that you've got such an emotional bond to and like a physical bond to as well. Um, I wouldn't know. But that's the end of chapter three. And the final chapter is journey to self-acceptance. Now, people and humans in general, like we're always battling with something. We're always dealing with our own problems and issues that are arising. And I don't think we're ever going to truly be fully content but that's not that's not in a bad way this is a reach but with buddhism right so i studied buddhism in gcse and you know their whole thing was to try and end suffering and they really the whole purpose was to end suffering and siddhartha Gautama, i'm getting so professional siddhartha Gautama, who was um the buddha uh, basically he um went on a journey to find like in a piece like to no longer suffer basically and when he met these ascetics who literally stripped themselves off of so many things like food clothing water everything like that all the essential things in life they got rid of one thing that they need the most and when siddhartha Gautama did it he stripped himself away from food he didn't want to eat food to see if that would end his suffering but he found it did not because if you deprive yourself of something so much, you're still going to have issues with that and you're still not, you're still going to be suffering basically because he was suffering because he's so hungry. He was extremely hungry and he was frail and everything like that and he realised this is not the way to go because he had come from a family of wealth and rich and he still wasn't happy with all this money, all this clothes, everything like that. He was not happy in that lifestyle and he was not happy with nothing. So what we need to do is find the middle way and basically get some bits of you know have some things but not have everything because if you have everything then you're not going to be grateful for things you're not going to realize the true beauty of things and I feel like that applies to so many things I don't think we're ever going to be truly like perfect within ourselves like we're never going to experience perfect emotions never feeling sad never feeling jealousy like they're natural emotions so what we need to do is go from feeling like terrible about yourself to try and move upwards a little bit more to try and find the middle way and find comfort in yourself because you're you know there's, there's still going to be things that you don't like about yourself whether someone says to you you look beautiful you have to believe it in yourself to be able to feel beautiful. You know what I mean? <clears throat> it comes from within, basically. <clears throat> because someone could be told all their life, you look absolutely stunning. There's, You're perfect. But if they don't believe that, they have the right to feel, you know, upset about how they look. But a lot of people will dismiss this and say but you look perfect why do you like why do you not think you look perfect like are you trying to get attention but that person is just they're not happy in themselves and no matter who says it to them they're still going to feel that because they haven't found it within themselves to accept themselves you know what i mean susan harter made a self esteem model which it was in my i think it was child development book okay so i'm going to just read this so i can get clued up as well our self-esteem is related to how close our self-image and ideal self are. The closer our self-image and ideal self are to each other, the higher our self-esteem. So obviously you can see here, this is kind of the little diagram that I probably put on the screen already, I think. So basically what this is trying to tell us is that, so self-esteem is the confidence in one's own ability. Now, with self-image, which is how we perceive ourselves, an ideal self, we need to kind of grow confidence in our self-esteem to kind of build the gap between them so that your self-image and your ideal self are closer. You know, some people may have really unrealistic expectations of their ideal self. They may want to be something that they they 
in all reality they cannot become but the closer we get to you know feeling confident about ourselves and building up um positive opinions on ourselves, the closer that our self-image and ideal self are which will make you feel better in yourself to round off this video i'm going to talk about journey to self-acceptance now personally I still think there's a long way to go for me and I know a lot of you guys sitting here watching this you may feel like there's a long way to go for you to actually fully accept yourself but for me personally I've never been someone who has hated the way I look like there are times when I've looked at myself and been like like excuse me I've kind of always had this motto where I'm like I'm never gonna say anything bad about myself like I'm never gonna say anything bad about myself even if I'm feeling it even if I want to say it I'm not going to say it about myself because I know the more you say these things about yourself, the more it like manifests into something bigger. By the way, what I mean by this is I'm not going to say anything negative about my appearance. Um, if like an action I've done is really idiotic, like obviously I'm going to say something bad about myself. I'm going to be like, oh, that was really stupid. Why did you do that? You know what I mean? Like if my actions are bad, I'll obviously accept them. But if like I'm never going to try and say something bad about my appearance, I'm going to try and you know work through that myself not put it out into the world i guess <laughs> you know if you are constantly saying oh i really feel ugly today you're going to start believing that you're going to start feeling like that's you and that every single day when you wake up you feel like you need to say it again and again until you believe that you are truly ugly even though you're not so that's why i've strictly said i'm even if i look at myself in the mirror and i think god what happened to me <laughs> i'm i'm not going to go i'm gonna keep that in my head i'm sorry i'm not walking over to people and saying oh sorry i look gross today like <clears throat> it's just something that i've like a rule for myself yeah i've never kind of you know i'm looking at myself now and i'm not i'm just seeing me right so i've never had a really negative image of myself my self-esteem is a little bit different because that kind of involves my personality and I do kind of feel like I've had times where I felt a little bit terrible about myself in the sense of like talking to other people and socializing socializing and my personality um this is an example which is yeah yes year 11 at school I genuinely thought I was the most awkward person ever and I really I became quite isolated because I didn't speak to many people um even though I wanted to it was kind of this thing where I was like if I spoke now I would probably say something stupid which is an example of my low self-esteem in my personality I think it's just in my nature to be an awkward person but you know I know that's me and I do hate it sometimes I do not hate I'm not gonna say hate because I don't want to hate anything about myself but I don't really like the fact that you know, I'm so awkward. I wish I could go up to people and just strike up a conversation, but in all reality, that's just not me, and it's just not not what I do. And if I was to start doing it, I'd feel like I would, I wasn't being myself. If you get what I mean, and I'll be living someone else's life because I'm not someone who goes over to people. You know, if I wanted to and like it felt right, then I will. But I'm not going to force it. You know what I mean? You know, as people, we're always going to learn things about ourselves, and I think that's a beautiful thing that we're always learning um you know but some people can go through terrible lows and then other people can go through like crazy heights in their self-confidence and stuff like that and I feel like you know we're all different and we're all going to experience these emotions differently and if you're someone who is really impacted by you know your low self-esteem and it's really impacting your life maybe you feel like you've got body dysmorphia, um, maybe not seeing yourself in the same way as others see you, um, or whether you maybe you're feeling a little bit anxious about yourself or a bit depressed about how you're feeling, um, go speak to a doctor or a therapist. In the future, I really hope to become a therapist, a counsellor person, because this is something that I really want to help people with that I've always wanted to kind of help people and that sounds really cliche like everyone says that everyone wants to help people but I just kind of want to share m knowledge and research that I've done compile it together I loved watching some video essay people on YouTube in I'll link them in the description I think one of them is called Sun no Olive 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 Sun Via which is I think her name's Olivia but <laughs> 
yeah and I just wanted to put this all together just to you know show you it's okay to be feeling a lot about yourself and it's okay to feel confident about yourself like don't feel like you're being too out there because there's no such thing as too out there who decides these things if you're not as confident but you really want to be this is a place where you know if you start to show confidence even if you're not confident even if you're not confident like I know I was saying about not going up to people if it's not what I feel is right and I don't want to change my personality but I do find sometimes even if I'm not confident I still just go for some things like if I have just a tiny tiny little bit of like I think I could do this I'm sometimes I just go for it and it kind of manifests it manifests itself into actual confidence if you get what I mean so there are different ways to take that and <clears throat> never change yourself to f- like fit in with other people to like always stick to your own beliefs and what you feel is to be correct <laughs> if you feel like you're changing your personality too much because of some things that you're doing or your appearance too much because of you know things online try and take a step back and think maybe write some things down I kind of when I'm feeling a little bit like all up in my head I write loads of stuff down in my diary and I just let everything out and it's the most refreshing feeling ever because you just feel like all your problems are something else's now you know that that book down there that's got all my problems in it's not mine anymore it's the book's problem (laughs) but yeah I think I'm going to end off this video now because um yeah it's quite long so yeah thank you guys for watching this video i have put so much effort into this video it's crazy it's taken me two weeks to make this video i've tried to make it as interesting as possible with different concepts and stuff like that and if there's anything you disagree on please comment comment it down below i went into this a little bit scared that i wasn't going to say the right points or anything like that but as i've gone along it's become more natural but If there's any like statistics that you think are a little bit wrong, feel free to put it in the comments because I would love to see a different point of view and stuff like that. But yeah, thank you all for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.